All right, everyone. Well, welcome back. And we are very luckily joined this morning by Orion Koski, fresh of a hot wind over Blood Diamond. So, Chris, uh, sorry, Orion, thank you very much for joining us today. Obviously, in your last fight, you picked up your win uh, in the UFC over Blood Diamond, someone who came into the UFC with a bit of talk behind him. How gratifying and happy were you after getting your first win? It feels good to have my first win. Um, it's unfortunate that I missed weight, but like I said in other interviews and after like the post fight press conference and all that stuff, it'll never happen again. It's just something that I'll uh, work on with the UFC PI to figure out what went wrong. It's the same weight that I've done for years, but overall, it feels good, you know, to uh, get rid of that loss and finally be back on a winning streak. I'm so used to winning that, uh, and I'm not used to waiting for a year. For per fight so it feels good to get back on track get in that cage and hopefully i can get in there sooner or later definitely felt good to fight in front of fans too though yeah yeah but all right um you clearly possess power um in the striking with the majority of your wins coming by by tko and ko having you know was having effective power in your punch is something that you feel you've always had or something that you've grown into and, um, and sort of gained as you've progressed along in your martial arts journey um, I wrestled my whole life, but I also feel like I've always had like strong hands or heavy hands just from like strong hips. We grew up in the woods, so fucking we kind of had our own little fight clubs going on. It wasn't really a fight club. We just thought of it as like sparring with each other out in the middle of the woods. And we did that shit bare knuckle and before school, after school, just having fun. So I just felt like I've always been strong just because I've done, you know, my chores as a res boy. But yeah. also like, hiking, swimming, all that stuff. So I just, I've always felt strong. A lot of people have always told us that we got that. Uh, is it appropriate to use the word retard strength nowadays? Yeah, you can <laughs> I, use that, man. <laughs> got it, so it's all good. Yeah, for sure. So, look, touching on your striking, uh, you did also display some strategic grappling in the match with Blood Diamond. Do you think perhaps the other aspects of your game are overlooked because of your success in the striking? Uh, no, I think a lot of people understand that my wrestling is going to be very uh, versatile, but I just think a lot of people go into the fight not knowing what to expect. Like, am I going to come out and just wrestle? Am I going to come out and just mostly strike? Or am I going to come out and mix it up? So a lot of people with MMA, they always think of these fighters as one-dimensional, but you know, a lot of these guys, when they fight me, they got to realize, hey, this guy's fucking multidimensional. He, he can wrestle, but with the striking, or he can strike and fucking make it seem like he's wrestling smooth. So I think it's just something that people just got to pay attention to. Mm. All right. There was obviously, like you touched on before, some focus on the, on the weight cut. I'm sure you're getting sick of talking about it now. Do you think that fans and, say, media members um, should potentially have, have a greater appreciation for, for the weight cutting process? Because, you know, physically and mentally, it, it, is, it is a really tough thing to go through, especially when you're dealing with so many variables during fight week. Do you think there should be a greater appreciation for weight cutting? I mean, they're not the ones cutting weight, so I don't think they need to give a shit. Um, we're the fighters, so either we got to cut weight and make weight, or we just need to bump up. So it's one of those things where I can fight at 170 or 185. So if I'm going to be cutting down to 170, man, man, fucking, I got to find a way. It doesn't matter what it takes. I got to do whatever it takes to make that weight, whatever yeah. you sign on the dotted line. Um, I know a lot of people say like, oh man, it must be so hard cutting weight, but a lot of fans are calling it out too now. It's just like, fuck, hey, if a weight cut is hard and you feel like it's taken away from your fighting ability, fight up a weight class. And then you mm. have these fighters being like, well, that's not how it works. Yeah, it fucking is. Like the fans are right in a sense, but you know, if you're able to make the weight, make the weight, do it. Yep. It doesn't matter until, uh, you know, we have what one FC that says you have to weigh in a certain weight and then the week of the fight and then you have to weigh in a certain way after you weigh in for the fight so if the ufc starts doing that route i feel like we'll see a lot of fighters bumping up weight classes but until then it is what it is for now yeah for sure so orion your brother lewis is a fellow fighter for the ufc who fights trevin giles september 17th growing up was the dream for the both of you uh to get to the ufc or did you guys have other sort of maybe career goals in mind uh, we just wanted to do something with sports, man. Honestly, yeah. we just wanted to be active and just be somebody with something. So it didn't matter if it was sports, acting, singing, fucking like music, like whatever it was, just having a good career. We just wanted mm. to be able to support ourselves and support whatever family we had. So fighting was definitely something, though, that we just grew into. We grew up with it our whole lives. So it made sense that 
we had, you know, some people behind us supporting us. And then we had a lot of people trying to tell us like, Hey, be realistic. You know, you got to go to college. You got to do that. Got to do that. You got to think about what if fighting doesn't work out. It's like, well, fuck fighting is going to work out. And that was the mindset we had was it was going to work out versus they had these tools of, well, what if it doesn't work out? It's like, that's why you don't fucking get what you want in life. Mm. You want to get where you like fucking say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it. So if you have a dream, pursue it. You don't do it it's because you fucking gave up on it, just like a lot of people do. Hundred percent. Look, Orion, you train at the you know the obviously prestigious um, team Alpha Male, with which you know really truly has a, a world class stable of coaches and and competitors um, to help you along in your in your journey. You know, or, or, you know, team Alpha Male is always going to be known as the gym for say smaller weight classes. You know, the band weights, top tier band weights coming out of there. What what sort of made team Alpha Male the perfect home for you when uh, when choosing your, uh, your 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 gym? Oh, just moving out of humble. Like I had my brother at Lost Boy still. And for me, when it comes to a gym, honestly, I, I kind of just train at multiple gyms still, dude. So I'll train at Alpha Male um, here and there. I'll train at my work here and there. Or I'll travel back home and train at Lost Boys here and there. Or trail, I can go to Vegas and train here and there. I'm going to train wherever I know it's going to be most beneficial for me. I don't care to help, you know. I do care to help my training partners if they're helping me. But I'm not trying to be that fighter who's helping other fighters to get them better ahead of me. I got to focus on myself. I'd be like, if I were to work as like a news journalist and I just go out and I start helping other news journalists and they start moving up in the fucking news journal world, but I'm still staying down here. It's not how it is as fighters. We can build each other up, but it's got to be beneficial. So, you know, as a fighter, you do got to be selfish. Yeah. And I feel nice. like a lot of people forget that in any sport that you do, you got to be fucking selfish but you also got to be selfless. But fighting is only a team sport when you're training. It's not a team sport when you're in that cage. You're in there by your fucking self. So I think of it as wrestling. You just train, train, train. Uh, you use people. They use you. And then you get better. Yeah, for sure. So, Orion, uh, you obviously have an interest in sports, as you just said. So away from fighting, what are some other hobbies that you know, you're know you into in, when you have spare time, when you're not uh, just hitting the gym? Yeah, I'm always outdoors. <laughs> I'm uh, trying to go hike, swim, fish, hunt. Um, definitely love being outdoors, rock climbing, zip lining. Um, right now, I'm actually back home in Humble County. I'm at a softball tournament, so we're doing softball, cornhole. I'm gonna go down river later on. Go watch the nightlight. You know, uh, to check out the stars and the meteor shower with my wife. Take her to go do that. I always promise her I will, as long as the weather's good. And as you can tell right now, it's pretty good weather here back home. Yeah. But I like doing all sorts of sports like football, baseball, soccer, rugby, like you name it. Like as long as I'm outside doing something or if I'm indoors, baseball, tennis, shit like that, and then we're just weightlifting. I, I just like being active, man. Like yeah. the only time I like playing video games is just it's like I'm done doing a full day and I have like nothing else to do. Mm. Mm. 100%. Well, look, um, all right, we don't keep you too long, man. I know you, you're outdoors and you, you got some things to do today, so we don't keep you too long. But um, last question from us is obviously with the win over, over Blood Diamond, You've had the, you know, like you said, it was a year between fights. Is there a time frame for when you'd like, like to, you know, ideally return in the octagon? And is there any name or, or anyone in interest, of interest that, that you can see that, you, that you'd like next? Yeah, my manager and the UFC are talking right now, so hopefully they can get back to me sooner than later. And they already know whoever they got lined up for me. If it was up to me, I'd be fighting every single month. But I mean, that's just not the way it is. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I, I don't care. They can line me up with anybody. I just want to fight. I'm always yeah. happy to be in that. Game. So hopefully you guys will see me in there sooner than later. But I know a lot of the fight cards are booked up right now. So maybe uh, October or November will be able to see me again. And if uh, I can get a fast finish and not a three-round decision, then uh, maybe you get to see me in there one or two more times before the end of the year. So. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Well, look, man, thank you very much for joining us today. We'll let you get back to what looks like an amazing day lined up for you. But uh, look, all the best uh, for the future. And yeah, we'd love to have you on next time you get a fight booked. Sounds good, man. Take care, guys. Awesome. Thanks, awesome. man. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it.